Thanks for having me. I think people will be very interested to hear that you're not uh, out here to demonize this technology right, right from the start. Why not? Well, I think it has a ton of potential. Obviously, folks are talking about how it can write essays for students, and uh, the education system is going to have to adjust around that. I know folks are trying to make text-based watermarks and things like that, but they're very easy to get around. You can't detect it with plagiarism detectors. So you're going to have some more proctored essay writing, but it also in introduces a lot of opportunities. You can prompt these large language models so that they can actually be a writing coach, they could be a tutor, uh, they can have a Socratic dialogue with you. Uh, so I think there's, it's going to unlock all sorts of new opportunities. I, I experimented uh, with my daughter uh, where it co-wrote a story with her and then at some point she wanted to talk to one of the characters and I said, <laughs> why not? And, and it let her talk to the character. Uh, this is this is the type of thing that would seem like science fiction even a year ago, uh, but it's now possible. And you know, I've done it with my children. It's an incredibly engaging way to do anything from writing to mathematics to science to, uh, what, to, to so anything you want to work on. Those books over your shoulders there. What is their future in in this AI education world we're talking about? I think they have a very good future in this AI education world. You know, we have a, a online high school, a Con World School, that. Uh, has the students doing a lot of reading of a lot of the books that I have that I have behind me right now. And I, we are already experimenting with ways that these large language models, if prompted appropriately, can actually have a Socratic conversation with you about the chapters of these classic books that you are reading. Hmm. Uh, historically, how do you do that? You write a book report that's kind of one dimensional. And obviously, we know that uh, the large language models can already write those for you. Right. Uh, but I actually think there's ways that you can almost have a book club with it. Uh, it it's still very so, early days. There's just a lot of experimentation. This is very interesting because what it makes me think, Sal, is that the real threat is to teachers. And maybe that's why the educational system is freaking out. Well, uh, once again, you know, when Khan Academy first came on the scene, there was a fear, oh, on-demand video or personalized exercises are a threat to teacher. And we, we've always been clear, if I had to pick between amazing teacher, amazing technology, I'd pick the amazing teacher every time. And that the technology just unlocks that. You don't have to give lecture in the classroom anymore. Every student can learn at their own time and pace, but it allows the teacher to actually go up the value chain. And so the same thing is going to happen here. These uh, bots, these large language models, they can act as a teaching assistant. Uh, we've already started experimenting with them to create lesson plans. Teachers hmm. spend almost half of their time creating lesson plans, sure. half of their time uh, creating evaluations for students. It can really accelerate that. And then if it, if it can act as a tutor for individual students and then report back to the, to the teacher how they're doing, uh, I think that's a boon for, for everyone. Fascinating. Okay, the giant asterisk to this conversation, Steve, is if you ask Google's new uh, <laughs> bard, what, great. what new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope can I tell my nine-year-old about in their promo earlier that they ran to, in this Paris unveiling, they gave the wrong answer. They said right. it was the first images of exoplanets. And it turns out the first images of exoplanets were actually taken in 2004. So I tested it to say, okay, if I ask Playground, OpenAI, the, the Microsoft technology chat, GPT, if I ask them this question, sure enough, they came back with exactly the right answer, both to the James Webb question and to the question of when were the first pictures of exoplanets taken. So the point is, Somehow these technologies have to be close to perfect if they're going to be deployed to some extent in the way Sal's talking about. He's not just talking about facts and information. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a process. But obviously, if the facts aren't reliable, that's going to be a huge issue. Yeah, it's here. one th and we're talking about education now. So obviously, that's a that's an issue there, too. But keep in mind, to, to Sal's earlier point, the pro on the product side, these both Google and Microsoft want this to touch their entire stack of technology. On the Google side, Google is huge in the classroom. Google services, Google Docs, Google True. Gmail, especially at the university level, but also in, in uh, you know, K through uh, 12 as well. And so kids are using this technology. It's gonna be available to them through Google Docs, through and also schools use Microsoft, of course. So what I'm curious to see is when they finally unveil that, what does it look like in Microsoft Word? How does a teacher know that their students are writing an essay in Google Docs with their own brain, or are they using a chatbot or whatever, a bard to write it for them? That is gonna be interesting. Do they flag it? Do they highlight it? Sure. What, what kind of connotation or marker is there going to be to make sure this doesn't happen, to make sure it's a, like to Sal's point, it's a tool, not a replacement. Sal, you want to comment on that? Absolutely. And I think you're going to see uh, the emergence of 
of new applications that use these large language model APIs that put in those safety mechanisms. So, you know, you don't ban the large language model, but the students use it in a context like this. And parents and teachers maybe see the transcripts of what the students are up to so they can see if the students use it to just outright write an essay or uh, it just helped them write the essay. And ideally, you set up the prompts in an application like this so that you tell it, don't just write the essay for the student, make them do most of the work, but you are a good writing coach or whatever else. And I think if you do that, uh, this is going to have a lot of potential. And, and and these things do hallucinate. That's the technical term for, for what they do when they make up facts and they make up links. Uh, and I don't think they're going to go away in, in the very short term. But I think in the, in the coming years, the benefits of them are going to outweigh the, the negatives for, for a lot of learners.